Hello. This series is looking at some of those technical and non-technical skills where trainers and assessors commonly see pilots having problems, and threat and error management is no exception. Now, threat and error management as a technique for improving flight safety has been with us for a number of years, yet many pilots are not consciously using it, and many indeed say they've never heard of it. Because the nature of helicopter operations is so diverse, and they take place in such a wide range of environments, it's important to consider the threats and potential errors, especially for dynamic operations such as search and rescue, EMS, police and military operations, where every flight can be different. Let's start by examining what do we mean by a threat? Well, if you imagine your theoretical perfect conditions for going flying, anything which differs from this may have a potential impact on flight safety. This could involve external factors such as weather, birds, obstacles, other air traffic. It could involve technical factors such as weight and performance of your helicopter or known equipment defects. It could involve operational issues such as your SOPs, scheduling and delays, documentation or pressure from superiors. And threats we commonly forget about are the personnel issues like crew composition, fatigue, recency and training. So if we now understand what sort of things we mean when we're talking about threats, let's examine errors in the same way. When we're flying, there's a range of unintentional errors we can make, the most obvious of which are handling errors. These usually occur when control inputs are inappropriate because of inattention or distraction, or through unfamiliarity with the aircraft type. We also have slips, lapses, and mistakes. Slips are when we know the correct action, but through clumsiness, inattention or distraction, we accidentally press the wrong button or move a switch to the incorrect position. Lapses are where we forget to do something. So in flight, the obvious examples are forgetting to make a radio call, to set an altimeter, or crucially, to read a checklist. Mistakes happen when we're working with the wrong information, either because we've made a mathematical error calculating weight and balance, fuel endurance or performance calculations, or it's because what we think we know about the helicopter and its systems is actually incorrect. So what can we do to manage threats and errors? Well, there are two key things you need to do. The first is to look at the situation in front of you. Given the weather you have today, the particular helicopter you're in, the crew you're flying with, the location you're at and the mission you have, ask yourself what are the significant threats you can see and what are the most likely errors you could make in this situation. The second thing we have to do is to decide if there's anything we can do to mitigate the threats and if there's anything we can do to either prevent the errors or to detect and fix them quickly if we do make them. Some simple examples of ways to mitigate threats may be to use the weather radar to look out for thunderstorms and adjust your route to avoid them. You can ask your crew to help you keep a good lookout for birds in the low level environment and you could make a good reconnaissance for wires before making an approach to an ad hoc landing site. You could ask your crew and passengers to keep a good lookout for other air traffic, or you can set up a TCAS display to help you monitor its relative position. You could calculate in advance the fuel stage which will give you the performance you require for your planned operation, and cross-check those fuel states before the critical manoeuvre. 
depending on the status of yourself and any other crew members regarding fatigue and health, experience, training and recency, you may want to help prevent errors by setting limits on the manoeuvres and operations you're going to perform. You may also want to set monitoring goals to ensure that errors do not remain undetected. Think particularly about the obvious errors you could make, especially if tired or distracted. This then becomes part of our plan, which we share with our crew if we have one by means of a briefing, whether this is a before takeoff briefing, an approach briefing, or a special operations or emergency briefing. You may or may not be surprised to hear that when faced with the task of taking off in conditions like this at an airfield they're not familiar with, the vast majority of pilots that I've come across in training will recite a standard brief along the lines of this is a standard runway takeoff, standard callouts, before takeoff checks are good, lifting. This of course reveals that the threat and error management process hasn't taken place because the briefing hasn't been tailored to the situation we're faced with. Pilots in this situation should be asking themselves a number of questions like how am I going to maintain the runway track and the instrument departure with this cloud base and visibility? How can I best use the automation or the co-pilot to assist me? What am I going to do if there's a power loss before or after I lose visual contact with the ground? Do I have an alternate airport nearby with better weather where I can divert to? The answer to these questions will really generate our briefing and help to form the foundation for the crew's situational awareness. So, hopefully you can see the value of threat and error management as part of your flight safety toolkit. All you have to do is look at the factors affecting the operation you're about to perform, decide what's significant, and work out what you can do to reduce the flight safety impact. The whole process should only take a few seconds in your preparation for takeoff landing, long lining, hoist operations, or any other critical phase of flight. I hope you found this video useful. If so, there are several more in this series for you to share or use as you wish. Check out our website at www.focuscrewtraining.com. Bye for now.